we now know about reference frames, where they are defined and how they are generated. The robot state publisher generates the different reference frame. But the actual functionality of TF, which is keeping track of the spatial and temporal relationships between reference frames is implemented in the TF2 underscore ROS package. In other words, all the linear algebra computations necessary to find out the actual translational and rotational offsets between different objects is done with this package. For example, given a pose of an object in a certain reference frame, we can transform it into a target reference frame. And this is exactly what we will be doing in this uh, module to actually compute the target pose for our robot arm and effector to manipulate the object detected by the logical camera. But we can also do some advanced functionalities like time travel to query information or the, the spatio-temporal information about the past as well, but we will not study those aspects in depth in this course. Anyway, I started this video with the TF2 underscore ROS package, but you might probably be curious if there was a TF1 ROS package as well. Yes, it was not exactly called TF1, but it was just called TF, and it still exists. Some applications continue to use the TF ROS package. And we will soon learn a few command line tools from the TF ROS package. In the ROS package TF, all TF functionality was implemented in one ROS package. But with TF2, the division of functionality is much more clearly structured. And use of TF2 underscore ROS uh, package is however currently recommended and most of the TF functionality has been migrated as well to TF2 underscore ROS and the other packages in the new structure in under TF2 underscore ROS. But the main advantage with TF2 underscore ROS is the availability of a transform buffer, which can cache transform information for a specified duration. We will explore the transform buffer in further detail in the next two videos. So we have been talking about spatiotemporal relationships for a while now. But how are they actually quantified? They are quantified via the geometry underscore messages transform stamped ROS message, which is a message type to represent 3D transformation. That is, it comprises of a field for 3D translation, 3D rotation in quaternion, so that rotations can be uniquely represented with respect to a given reference frame. Rotations in RPY are also supported for simplicity, but it is strongly recommended to use quaternions for computations involving rotations. And the TF topic is used to aggregate all transforms from our environment so that transform information can be made available to all ROS nodes in our application. The TF topic carries the TF2 underscore messages TF message data type, which is just an array of transform stamped message types. Note that it was because of this topic TF that we were able to check the TF checkbox in Arvis when we visualized the reference frames a couple of videos ago. All right then, let's explore some TF command line tools. But before that, we will have to start our factory simulation in a new terminal. Since we are inspecting some tools without moving our robots, we can as well reduce the graphics demand by launching the factory simulation with the GUI colon equals false argument to the hrwros underscore environment launch file. Recall that we learned how to start launch files with arguments in week one. Once our factory simulation is running, we can start another terminal and source our setup files, which prepares us to execute the different command line tools we will learn now. Note that only for the command line tools, we will use tf instead of tf2, but the functionality is pretty much the same in both cases. We will definitely explore the main benefit of TF2 with the buffer when we learn the TF2 underscore ROS code API in the following videos. The first tool we will learn about is the TF underscore echo tool, which prints the transformation between a source and a target frame on the terminal. The two other tools we will learn are the view underscore frames tool to view the complete TF tree and static transform publisher to publish a static transform between a parent and a possibly new child frame. 
these two tools are more fun to explore in a code illustration. So we will do that in the next video. But before we conclude this video, let's explore the tf underscore echo tool. First, the static case, where we query a transform between a source and a target frame that never move in our environment. For example, the world and robot 2 underscore pedestal underscore link. And we can clearly see that the transform between these two frames is exactly the same as what we had set up in our sacro. Also, like we learned a couple of videos ago, this reference frame information coincides with the joint origin corresponding to the fixed joint between world and robot 2 pedestal link. Since we only had translation, I have highlighted the translation part of the output here. But note that the rotation also matches. Yet another aspect to note is that tf underscore echo prints the latest transform information at a frequency of 1 second or 1 hertz. Here we see three updates, but this specific transform is between objects or links that are fixed with respect to each other and it is evident from the fact that this transform is at time 0, meaning the latest available transform for the was the very first transform between these two links at time 0 and it continues to be the same because they are fixed. Now let us check the output of the tf underscore echo command between a source and a target frame that are actually getting updated regularly by the robot state publisher because they correspond to joint values that can actually change over time. For example, the transform between the world frame and the forearm link of the robot 1 that can move. Although the transform itself is not changing over time because the robot is not moving right now, the time at which the transformation is printed is constantly getting updated because the joint states and consequently the reference frames associated with the joint origins are continuously being updated by the robot state publisher. And finally, we see that both translation and rotation as a quaternion is also shown as output. For legacy reasons, TF also provides output in RPY. Cool. It is indeed nice to see TF taking care of reference frames for us. But if you try these commands right now, you may not see the output exactly as it is shown here. And you may see some warnings, even error messages. Let us see why that could happen and also explore the remaining command line tools in the next video. See you soon.